Lord Hunt of King's Heath. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. Marriage. My Lords, the Government recently announced our response to and the results of the consultation on the Gender Recognition Act. We are now focusing on digitising and streamlining the process and reducing the fee. We hope these changes will make the process less bureaucratic for transgender people. At this stage, we are not proposing further legislative guidance, but we will keep this under review. Uh, Lord Hunt. My Lords, does the Minister accept that insensitive discussions about the interaction between the Gender Recognition Act and the Equality Act, those most affected, namely women and transgender people, should have freedom to speak, and that intimidation and no platforming are not acceptable? Will the government reiterate its belief in the importance of single-sex places provided by the Equality Act and make it clear to public bodies that it's not acceptable to insist on gender-neutral services at the expense of providing women-only safe spaces in refuge and rape crisis centres? Thank you. My Lords, I agree with the Noble Lord that um, the freedom of speech in this area on all sides needs to be conducted in a manner that is respectful of people with very differing uh, views. And yes, indeed, the Equality Act has an ex exemption so that single-sex spaces uh, sh can be provided and actually where it is justified, somebody can be refused access where it is justified to that space. Uh, Lord Treesman. My Lords, I'm sure that the Minister today will explicitly commit the government to sticking to the statutory definitions required for collecting data in respect of sex discrimination and will guide ACAS to do so. Since gender identification would not provide reliable data for statistical analysis purposes needed to understand historical patterns, what advice will the government give to ensure complete clarity in the data required to comply with the legislation? And given the comparable difficulty in defining gender if it relies solely on self-identity, will the government commit itself to advising the NHS on the specific rights of women who do not have male bodies to access single ward, single sex wards and medical facilities? Uh, my Lords, as I've outlined, the NHS as a public body um, knows that it's the Equality Act that outlines its provision of services, so single-sex wards can be provided. And there is specific guidance, the NHS guidance, that at present states that trans transgender people should be accommodated according to their presentation, but that decisions need to be made in the best interests of patients, and we leave it to frontline clinicians who are aware of the circumstances on their wards and in their hospitals to make those decisions. 